Hello everyone, I'm Drake, like the dragon, not the rapper, and welcome to the Night Fisherman. What looks to be a pretty short game. But very pretty and interesting. You are a Night Fisherman. And it's, uh, not responding. Aha, uh -huh, cool. Okay, you spot a boat approaching in the distance. Okay. After stowing your flashlight, you reach over the side of the boat and collect a palm full of water. You throw it over your face, washing the night's tresses away. You pick up your rod and open your bait pouch. A collide magnet. You wince as you pierce its squirming body, behold it regretfully for a moment, and cast a line. The man in the other boat has a thin strap across his body. On his back you can see the protruding stalk of a shotgun. Hello sir, I'm Churchill, the CEPG. Hello. I'm checking in with all vessels in the area. I'm wondering if you wouldn't mind leading me a lighter. Mine must have gone overboard. I, of course. What do I do? We toss the lighter to the other boat. Thank you, sir. You are Mr. Gardiner, are you not? That'll be me. The other man lights his cigarette, then pockets your lighter. You steal a glance around your boat. And you know who I am, what I do? I do. Then please tell me what it is that I do. Find immigrants or stay silent. I guess that's the one. You consider for a moment as Churchill's eyes fix on you. You're part of the English Protection Group. You stop smugglers from bringing immigrants into England. Bingo, that's the job Mr. F has given us indeed. It's my duty to sail about checking every boat out here, checking the caves. Our leader doesn't want any immigrants slipping through the net. It's good speaking to you, Mr. Churchill, but how am I able to help? Oh, I'm sure you can't. I'm told you're an upstanding man, Mr. Gardiner. But perhaps you can help me another way. You must hear gossip, perhaps from Mrs. Gardiner. Have you heard anything about the smugglers? Ah. Uh, you reach down, grab a tin of cheap, shady bass beer. Or was it Chandy? I don't know. I heard they moved further north, or you spooked them and they stopped. Hmm. Just a rumor, mind you, but they stopped operating. Apparently they got scared of the EPG, spooked into hiding. So they let their French counterparts know to not use this area anymore. Ah, oh, a shame. So the cowards ran back to their mother's skirts. No fun. The man sighs into his cigarette as you drink your watery lager. Well, in that case, there's nothing more for me to do here. My work is done. Sorry to have troubled you. Not at all, sir. A welcome distraction. Churchill drops his shoulders. He's at ease now. His threatening presence is dissipating. Churchill turns to his hand to his boat, readying himself to leave. Caught anything tonight? Not much luck tonight, no. Nor me. You know what they call me in the lefty papers? He hovers for your answer. I don't pay attention to things like that. No, of course, but you've heard it. Surely you know of the name. Aye. Then please, what is it? The dark masks the sweat on your brow. 
the Kid Fisher. You're apprehensive, unsure how he'll react. They call you the Kid Fisher. Yes, a name I've well earned. He's focused on you again now, no longer leaving. They call me this because I'm the best at fishing immigrants out of this channel before they reach shore. And because they say I cast them out to water. It's not a perfect metaphor. Here's a better one. The animal that best embodies the character of an Englishman is, naturally, the lion. We are proud, stubborn, often uninterested in menial labor, but so powerful that others will do it for us. So most of the EPG will hunt in places which could hide a lion. They check sturdy shipping containers and yachts. Illegal immigrants are pigeons, not lions. They swarm in great number, attracted to urban places, roost anywhere they can, and most importantly, we don't like them. Now, pigeons are really no different than the beloved Jay, but we, malign the pigeon, consider them dirty, vermin. It's difficult to be a pigeon. Mr. Gardiner, I'm the best at catching them because I know what tremendous feats human beings are capable of once they abandon dignity. You listen in silence. Ah, uh, anyway, I assume you won't mind if I enjoy a tipple. Go ahead. The other man pulls an elegant bottle out of his jacket pocket. The blue glass is artifully blown to appear as a thorny rose stems are wrapped around it. The bottle is capped with a cast metal stopper in the shape of a rose. He removes it then drinks from the bottle. Sapphire rose. There is no better scotch. I... Shh, shh. I'm going to have to inspect your boat. But when people cooperate with me, they are not punished. In fact, they are given safe passage home to their loved ones, and no charges are brought. Do you understand? I. The kidfisher's face becomes deadly serious. You're transporting an illegal immigrant, aren't you? You consider for a second, and that very consideration gives you away. There's nothing for it now. I. They're hiding underneath that tarpaulin behind you, aren't they? Tears mixed with the sea spray and sweat dripping into the boat. I... I will not throw you a line. Move far away from the trampoline and get ready for... and get ready to swim. The rope attached to the larger vessel lands at the fore of the boat. Away from the tarp. Fuck. Fuck, what I do? Um, I think I am going to follow his instructions now, but maybe replay to see what happens if I take the other one. You shuffle to the front of the boat and take the safety line, hands quivering. You keep your eyes up, away from the boy under the tarpaulin. Churchill takes another sip of sapphire rose, stoppers it, and places it back inside his coat. Excellent, Mrs. Gardiner will be very pleased to have you home safe and sound. Rule Britannia. Oh, fuck. Oh, God, that made me jump. Your boat flips, the hull shot through. For a few seconds, all is black. The rope begins to pull you through the bitter waves. Churchill heaves you aboard his boat, then handcuffs you slumped against the guardrail. For a few seconds, he watches the water, weapon at the ready. The boy resurfaces, grasping at the sea air. Churchill lines up his final shot, then relaxes the gun with an ecstatic grin. Laughing, he turns to his vessel and readies it to sail on. I hope we meet again. Goodbye, little one. Watching the boat leave, the boy begins weakly to swim. Yo, what? Oh, fuck, dude. 
We're making one short narrative game a month to play more like this search for far few giants. I certainly will. Oh my god, that was... Damn, yeah, I want to see what happens if I play that differently. It's very short, so... Okay, I am back in it. Oof. That was good. I really was tense and the, the shot made me jump. <laughs> Thankfully, I've got my earbuds on because otherwise I think my sleeping cat would have been very fucking disturbed. Okay, we spot a boat approaching in the distance. I've already done all of this. Hmm. What if I tossed a bait? You let the maggots be. Instead, you toss a handful of smelly boiled bait into the sea and cast your line. The man in the other both has his thin strap across his body. Okay, I'm gonna say they moved further north. Just to remind you, but they moved north. Apparently there's better caves near the next estuary anyway. So they let their French counterparts know to make a slightly longer journey. Ah, oh, shame. Perhaps they outfoxed us this time. Sorry to have troubled you. You're apprehensive, unsure how he'll react. They call you the kid fisher. Okay. I, isn't that a comment about pigeons versus the J in reference to that graffiti piece that's possibly by Banksy in England? England is still very anti-immigrant, so I'm... It, this kind of hits home because I would like to move to England by the end of this year, and uh, I'm terrified of their immigration services just, like, denying my request. I don't know, based on nothing but the fact that they don't want immigrants. I don't know. Yeah, this taps into some, like very realistic stuff still and uh as if the people who are going through all of this to get into a safer country have any better choice and as if gaining asylum isn't the most difficult type of visa you could possibly get okay Okay. So do I let him arrest me on his boat and make the boy swim away? Possibly to drown because we're in the middle of water. Uh, or do I go to the boy? I think I'm gonna go to the boy this time. You kneel by the tarp. Take the boy's hand in your own. His confused eyes caught at you. I'm sorry, lad. Churchill takes another sip of Sapphire Rose. Stop it and places his back inside his coat. Such a shame, Mr. Gardner. You could have taken the rope and been dropped safely home. I'll send my regards to your wife. Rule Britannia. Oh god, that's awful. This, just the sound and everything. The fisherman's boat flips, the hull nearly shattered. For a few seconds, Churchill watches the water weapon at the ready. The boy resurfaces, gasping air misted with the fisherman's blood. Churchill lines up his final shot. Then relaxes the gun with an ecstatic grin. Laughing, he turns his vessel and readies to sail on. Hope we meet again. Goodbye, little one. The boy begins to weakly swim. Ugh. Yeah, there you have it. That would be the night fisherman. That was really good, and I will certainly look for more Our Few Giants games. I hope you all enjoyed this video, um, as kind of heavy as it is, and uh, I don't know. This is good, like this kind of stuff. It it makes me think, and 
I know for some people it might not be that deep, but it is for me because I care about other people uh, a lot. And yeah, um, I really enjoyed this. I really enjoy how heavy it is when you think about it and um, how it reflects reality and how it reflects some of my personal fears. So. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please leave a like on the video. It will mean a lot to me. And I will see you guys soon in the next one. Bye for now.